In today's video, I'm actually going to be interviewing uh, an AI expert to bring you some knowledge about what many of you have already heard about and are using on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's chat GPT, but also looking at tools outside of chat GPT that utilize this type of technology. Uh, so with me today, uh, I actually have Mark Good, the founder of AI Force, and he's going to be hanging out with us. How's it going, Mark? Good. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for having me on the show. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you. So I, I'm going to jump right in because I am really excited about uh, just, I, I don't even know what to call it. Like you're so much more, uh, I, I think, just educated on these topics. I know you are. Um, so I'm just going to call it AI or chat GPT because um, that's what I know to call it. Um, and I've actually heard a couple of people refer to you now on LinkedIn as the AI guy. Uh, so if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, like how do you, you know, get that nickname? Yeah. Um, yeah, you can call it whatever you want. AI, chat GPT, Bing is even in the game. Uh, not many people use it yet though. Um, neural net, uh, deep learning. These are all the terms that just sort of encompass the same thing. I think over time, you know, like, a, maybe some more standard terms will, uh, show up, but yeah, for now we go with AI or chat GPT either way. I, I studied under, uh, Dr. Carl Lejeune Fahir under the two minute papers and just every, you know, year after year compounding the knowledge. Um, and then OpenAI developed their product. Um, so I became an early beta tester. Uh, and then they rolled out ChatGPT, which was, co of course, when AI really took the world by storm. Um, and and ChatGPT really lowered the bar for, for um, anybody's ability to engage with this uh, neural net language model, uh, text generation style AI. And, um, that's, I think, you know, that's the moment where it was, where AI force was really born, to be honest, it was, uh, okay. The, the bar has lowered enough that people in general can go to what is a chat bot essentially. And we're all used to chat bots, right? So, um, anybody can engage with AI now. All right. All right. Now I have the vision. I can see where AI is going to be able to be incorporated into Salesforce. And I, I have the vision for how, and so, yeah, that, that's where it all started. That's really interesting. And it makes perfect sense. Like just thinking, sort of summarizing everything you said, it's, you've got this culmination of knowledge and experience and passion and energy that you're pouring into something. And historically it's just been for your education and your knowledge and your ability to, I'm sure, you know, some of the things that you were working on, uh, in your career, but you have eight years of effectively training and exposure to this type of technology. And then this moment happens where the world becomes aware of AI more than just as a, a catchphrase um, or a trending topic, but truly chat GPT is released and everyone's talking about it and everyone's using it, not just talking about it, but using it. And to me, as the consumer side, it feels a lot like Google's search engine being released. It's just like, wow, this is wild. And I remember using Ask Jeeves, and even then it was kind of, it was still really cool that you could ask questions and get answers and it could help you find things. And you didn't just have to have like a Rolodex of websites that you like to go to for stuff, like it could help you. Um, but I can't imagine what that was like for you to see the thing that you know and love become something that the general population is suddenly excited about. I mean, it sort of feels like me with Salesforce, obviously this is a, what you're looking at is a much bigger space and far beyond the, the scope of just Salesforce. But for me, it was, I love Salesforce and careers and this idea of being able to be financially independent, all these concepts. And then suddenly everybody else cares about financial independence and everybody else cares about Salesforce. And uh, suddenly all, all the things that I cared about for the last, you know, five or 10 years, everyone wants to know about. And it was just a really great, uh, just sort of like critical moment, um, to take advantage of. And obviously you're right at the front of it, which is amazing. So, um, for anyone sort of watching this video or listening to this video, um, I actually, myself and a team of talent stacker alumni and, and some existing members, uh, just went through Mark's launch of AI force, which is a a training platform. I'm sure he'll tell you more about it, but it's a training platform to take you from using a tool like chat GPT, uh, or what he calls his AI force engine and taking that from just being someone who pokes around with it and being someone who legitimately is trained and understands how to utilize this type of technology to really just 
just dominate the space, just, just really take control of this training. And so, um, I already know the answer to this question, but I want to ask you for the benefit of the audience. Um, what is AI force training and why do I need training? This was a question for me coming into this because I, I made a choice for our team to make an investment of our time and our resources. Um, and for me, this was a question. So I know that no other people are asking this. When I look at a tool like ChatGPT, it seems so intuitive. Like I can just go start typing into it and it just works. Um, why would I need training? What What is it about the training or what you offer that is just so valuable in your opinion? AI is like a beast that has to be tamed. Um, and no, no tool that you create or at least not at this point, can really tackle all of the challenges that come with using AI. So anybody who's gone to ChatGPT and tried to get a response that they were looking for, get an answer to a question, um, has quickly come to realize that like, hmm, it's not quite what you think it would be. Um, yeah, you can ask questions and yeah, you'll get answers. Um, and sometimes you'll get answers that are totally out there and make no sense at all. And sometimes you'll get answers that are just spot on. And um, so that's when, so trying to make, in trying to make the actual AI force engine tool, which we've made and works great. Um, it, you still have to have training, no matter what, at the end of the day, you still have to understand what this AI is, what's underneath the hood, how it ticks. And it's almost like, because it's a chatbot style, um, engagement, you, you really do have to learn how to communicate with the, with AI effectively so that you can get the responses you're looking for and get them quicker, quickly. Um, you can spend, you know, 30 minutes trying to get a solution to a challenging problem, or you can spend five. And that's the difference. Someone who goes through, through training, someone who goes through AI force training will be able to get a solution in five minutes where someone else would stumble through and take 30 minutes to an hour. Um, we teach you how to uh, engage with AI to get the responses, the correct responses faster. Um, we teach you its, its limitations so that you know what you can't go and ask it, you know, th things that it would give you an answer for, but that just aren't going to be right. And you'll waste the next hour of your time trying to implement a solution that just doesn't work fundamentally from the beginning. Um, and these are the kinds of things that we cover. Right. I mean, I, I would agree with that. Um, you know, from my experience, it was exactly that I went to a meetup, uh, here in my local area in Houston and. I talked to a guy and he was saying that they had a developer at their company that swore by chat GPT and he could use it to do his job faster. And pretty much everything he did had some amount of chat GPT involved in that solution. But then he himself was saying I, he couldn't do anything usable with it, that he could use it a little bit and sort of get pointed in the right direction. And it was cool but it wasn't actually useful at the end of the day in building a solution. And I remember coming out of that, and this is when we were getting ready to uh, go through your launch training. And I just thought how excited I was to go through your training because I wanted to know what is the difference between the guy I'm talking to that can't seem to get a usable solution out of ChatGPT and the developer that uses it on a daily basis. Like what makes those two people different? And I'll say that I came out of your training feeling the answer to that, right? Like feeling, well, it's so much more than just saying, write me a formula field that does X, Y, Z. Like you have to understand how to communicate with this thing. And I won't go too much into, you know, the details of, of what you bring to the table. But one of the things I do want to point out is you teach us how to talk to this thing. Like we have a relationship with it. Like it's a new person in our lives. And I love that analogy because because it is in a way, and it's weird, and we'll have to adapt to that re reality. But it's like get it, hiring a new assistant, and you just interviewed them, and now they work for you, and they're going to come assist you with your work. And you have to learn to ask that person questions in a way that they understand what you're asking. You have to learn to respond to them in a way that they understand what you need to be different. Um, you need to know when that moment comes and you go, Hey, look, I've just confused you so much that we just need to start over. Like, let's just start over with what I was asking you to do. And that's how I'm starting to see this relationship with, you know, it was the chat GPT tool, but now using your AI force engine, um, it's really interesting to, to communicate it. Uh, with it in a way that you're treating it like another entity, like something that 
thinks in a certain way and responds in a certain way and understands you in a certain way. And once you can get on that level, I think that truly the sky is the limit on what we can do. I mean, and you you look at a tool like ChatGPT that had three a month ago and now it has ChatGPT four and who knows when ChatGPT five and six are going to come out. Like everything is just changing so rapidly that the sooner we start that relationship that, and I, and that's the way I mean it, like that relationship with this tool, the better you're going to be able to utilize it tomorrow too. Um, so it's, it's just amazing to, uh, to watch this all come together. And if you can't tell, I'm really excited about what you're bringing to the table for this community. It is changing very quickly. Um, that's one of the challenges with uh, building an AI tool and open AI has this issue. Uh, anyone else who builds a tool is going to have this issue. Uh, the rapid speed of improvement on the underlying neural net um, underneath AI is, is, uh, is really extraordinary how quickly it's moving. Um, four and five will be out over time and the training will be updated to reflect the new sort of maybe language or dialect that comes through with that new revision. Um, and it does have to be changed and, and even better than having that change and having to adjust to it is that the responses will be even better from AI when those improvements come out. Um, I've watched over the past, you know, since 2014, 2015, the rapid pace of improvement and changes up till now, I think a year to two to three years from now, we're going to look back at chat GPT and it will almost be a laugh. Like when chat GPT rolled out at the end of 2022, early 23, we'll almost laugh at the, you know, the basic feel of it, you know, and it's kind of, it'll be kind of like the rollout of Google or the internet. I mean, imagine 10 years later after the uh, various industries have adopted that technology and we've all like literally shifted our lives, the way we function to the new technology that came. Um, AI is going to be no different and um, the rapid improvements are coming. And again, all the, all, you know, this is why it's so important to get in on the early stages so that when you want to call yourself an AI expert in Salesforce, you actually can, because you've been in it for 12 months when someone else might be joining for the first time, 12 months from now, you don't want to be the person joining for the first time, 12 months from now, if someone's been certified in, uh, in GPT for over a year. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So I have a ton of other questions and I know we've covered a lot in this uh, sort of segment, in this interview already. Um, so for anyone interested in Mark's training, make sure to head over to AIforcetraining.com and we'll have a link in the description. Um, so I have a lot of other questions for you from is chat GPT and you know, AI force engine and tools like this, are they going to take our jobs? in the next 12 months or 24 months? Um, is this going to be the death of Google? Like, is Google going to be this really outdated thing to be doing? And then things like, can we, you know, preserve ourselves? Like if this type of technology is in reality, potentially going to replace what we know our jobs as today, how can we position ourselves in a way that's going to allow us to work for years and years and years to come and not worry too much about that? Um, so we're going to cover all of that in our next video. So make sure you check out part two.